ties into that. How do you stay focused on your writing goals when things aren't going so well, when you reach a point in the manuscript that's maybe a little bit more challenging than you would like? How do you keep yourself going? Well, I have a writing group that I just, st we just started this group a couple of years ago. It hasn't been going very long and I've, I've never had a writing group before, but it's, this has just been amazing for all four of us. It's just four women. Um, we're all around the same age. We're all, you know, writing pretty much at the same level and we meet every other week um, and take whatever we're working on. So the most recent book that I finished and I'm about ready to start trying to find a home for, um, came to me very strangely in little bits and pieces. Usually I write chronologically, um, but in this case, I just, I didn't and I couldn't. And so I didn't know what it was. And I would just take it to the group um, and they'd say, we don't know what it is either, but we like it, so keep going. And had I been doing it on my own, I think I might've been more discouraged and might've been more likely to put it aside for a while. So, you know, that's a big help to me to have, to have that group. Um, I also do a lot of weird, um, what I think of being left brain exercises if I get stuck. I mean, you can't think about writing by thinking, you know, you can't say, well, I'm going to now think about writing because it just makes you crazy and it all starts looping around and you never come to any solution at all. So um, it really takes your whole head to write. And part of why you need that, you know, more structured part of your brain is to help you see what you've got. And so if I get really stuck, I'll go back and I do this weird thing um, where I'll just start on, I'll start at the beginning and I'll write um, uh, chapter one, first sentence, and I type it on a spreadsheet and then I will try to write a sentence or not really a sentence, but just a shorthand really for what happens on every page. Then I type the last line and then I skip a line and then I just keep going until I get to wherever I am in the manuscript. It is absolutely anal retentive. You cannot say that you can't do it. I mean, because you can do it. You just have to tie yourself to the chair. It makes you crazy, but you can do it. <laughs> and, and the thing that is so great about it for me is that once I start doing that, I start noticing things and my other part of my brain starts going nuts. And so I might notice, I might, might notice, well, what happened to this character? I haven't, just haven't, written his name for a while, you know? So I'll go to a notebook and I'll jot that down. Where's Bob? And um, and and I might say, you know, I have an awful lot of description and not so many scenes right here. So I might jot down, look at the balance between narrative and scene. And so by the time I get through to wherever I stopped, and I'll do this at the end of a draft too, you know, if I get finished with the draft, I have usually observed something that shakes it loose. And, and then I will, you know, then I'll, I'll move, move on. Um, and so you know, you're revising while you're drafting a, a, a new story. Yeah, I do. I mean, I do it all different ways. I'm not the kind of writer who can just write and get it all down and go back and look at it. It takes me, you know, I'm always telling people they should do that. And, <laughs> and it's great if you can. And I think for beginning writers, it's, it's a good idea just to practice doing that because you have to get rid of the idea that that you're going to get it right the first time and and just let it happen and get into the habit of writing but for me as you know as I wrote more and more I found that it was better for me I'm a slow writer you know it takes me a long time if I work all day and I mean like 8 hours I would be lucky to get 5 pages um but then those 5 pages are are usually pretty done um but not always. And, and so it's a, you know, to me, it's sort of like, you know, like leapfrog in a way you move forward, you go back, you move a little bit forward, you move back, you go a little bit forward and eventually you get to the end. And, um, and then you, you know, you see what, what you've got. Um, I always tell people that writing is sort of like translation in, in that um, if you think about what it's like to translate a poem, say from French to English, you have to be fluent in both of those languages. You have to be fluent in the cultures, but there are some things, you know, you can't change. It's not going to help because you, the music of the languages is really different. You, they sound so different. Syntax is different. If it's a rhyming poem, it's, the words are not going to rhyme in both languages. Cultural things aren't translatable. And so, you know, your job is to go back and forth and back and forth until you get it as close 
as it can be. So it's all about being stubborn and, and being fluent in both sides. And writing is exactly the same thing. You know, words are a second language to your heart. You've got the story in your head, you've got it in your heart, you've got it in your mind's eye, but none of that is words. And so when you go to the thesaurus and you're looking for that word and you think, where is it? It's not a lot of the times there is no word. And so you have to learn how to use the language, you know, to narrow that gap between the story in your head and the one that you're able to get on the page. So you're going back and forth and back and forth um, until you get it as close as it can be. And you can't always see that yourself. You know, some, you have to have somebody help you see what's on the page. Cause when you read your words, you, you can't help but bring the stuff that you already know and doing those sort of anal retentive left brain exercises are very helpful for helping you actually see what's there. Um, as opposed to wishing it was there or assuming it was there, if that makes any sense at all. So oh, yeah, I actually Nobody uh, ever enjoys my novel as much as I do, because I know exactly what I mean. <laughs> exactly. But if it weren't for partners and for editors, it would, right. would already be written. Well, in, in um, looking for Jack Kerouac, I had this funny experience where I, I sent a draft to my agent who was, was a good reader. And um, she, there's a character named Duke and I love Duke. He's a like to me, he's hilarious. But um, but anyway, she sent me an email and she said, did you mean for Duke to be a complete and total jerk? And I was like, well, <laughs> no, you know, I mean, he's he's a bad boy, you know, but but he's got a good heart. And she said, that's not there yet. And so I said, oh, OK. And I had to go back then and go through the manuscript and find places where I could show that, you know, I could have him do something that would make readers see that he was a more complex person um, than I had originally written him. So, I mean, I think that stuff is fun. I love revision. I, it's my favorite part. So how lot. many drafts are you going to, because obviously you're revising as you're drafting. So once I mean, you're It's hard done. to say. Um, and for some books more than others, um, this book, Stranded in Harmony, uh, yeah, I guess you can see it. That book, which took me about 15 years to write on and off, went through, I actually have a, a photo, I should have brought it with me. Um, I'll send it to you, you can use it sometime if you want. But anyway, it's a photograph of myself with all of the failed drafts and they come up to my shoulder. <laughs> so I love to take it to school, you know, and, and then um, kids will, there's always some smart aleck, you know, well, why didn't you just stop? And, and I just say, well, that's what you don't do when you're a writer, you know, that's what it's really all about. You don't stop, you just keep going until you get it. And to me, that may be, in the end, the, the most important thing. You could be, you know, you could have all the talent in the world, but if you if you don't have the discipline um, and if you can't accept criticism, you're not going to get there. You know, it's not going to not gonna work for you. So, so non-writers are the ones that that didn't keep going. Well, I think I think that's ab I think that's absolutely true. And I, you know, I as I said, I've taught writing for years and. I had a lot of very talented people over the years of all of all ages and some of them I for whatever reason they they don't allow themselves to do it I think that happens to adults a lot and particularly women I think because they you know women tend to be very caught up with family and obligations and they won't allow themselves you know the time that they need to do this thing that is important to them and then time goes by and they feel like it's too late. It isn't too late, you know. Um, it's too late to be the younger writer you might have been, but it's not ever too late to write now. But yeah, I think it has a lot to do with discipline and um, the ability to be objective about your own work and to, to not only endure criticism, but to welcome it. It's a great gift because when somebody's a good critic, they can help you, they'll shortcut that process for you because they'll tell you what's there you know, and you can't see that yourself. So that's, I think, really important. Plus that's when you know you've got a, a true friend that'll tell you what they really think, not that's the right. social polite thing that'll just move this along so we can yeah. have dinner and, and move on with our lives. Yeah, and that's what I have in that writing group that is that is so helpful. And I have some other readers who are really good too, but um, the writing group is particularly that helpful because it happens every other week, right? So I can go back and, and um, 
I don't things don't get skewed because sometimes if you keep going and there's something wrong, it's like it's like hanging wallpaper, you know, and you get a little bit off way over on that side of the wall. But then by the time you get to the end, you've got a big triangle that's empty because it was just a little bit crooked. And then it keeps getting more and more crooked as you go. And, and a book can be like that, too. You know, if you get off on a wrong tangent or something. So the writing group can help you with that, too. Oh, I saw this. You're doing serial installments for the group to critique as you're going. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, which is great. I love that because it's really, I didn't think, one reason I never did a writing group was because I didn't think it would work with a novel. I really didn't. Um, novels are really difficult. It's really hard to teach the novel. I don't, you know, people um, get into MFA programs, which are, you know, good for stories, but they're not really good for novels because they, they take so long. And you, you know, you don't know what they're going to be um, for a long time. They have to evolve. And, and so, yeah, but this group, they haven't had any trouble with that. We're, we're looking at, well, three out of the four of us have, are working on novels. And it does get a little confusing sometimes because, you know, you'll bring a chapter and there'll be a character in there that maybe we saw six months ago, but we don't quite remember. But it's not really a problem. You know, we, we get it figured out. And um, it's been really, it's been amazing. You have a writing group. I do. Yeah, uh, yeah. We should plug them real fast. It's the. Yes. Uh, oh, <laughs> have we have we present the young adult cannibals? I like that. Uh, including our previous guests, author Laura Martin and Shannon Alexander. I'm trying to think who else has published the uh, upcoming Lisa Phipps, who just got a great book deal, um, and uh, Sarah J. Schmidt, author of. Yes, uh, I know Sarah. I like her. Yeah, she's fantastic. Yeah. We see her at a bunch of local, but it's all of us Hoosier authors. It's such a small community. We're all bumping into each other on a regular basis, which is fantastic. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. And I want more of you to come and teach for the Writer's Center, too. I, I want that, too. I've been bugging everybody. Laura has an ironclad excuse. Her schedule <laughs> makes me tired just hearing about it. <laughs> uh, but Sarah Schmidt, if you're watching this, what are you doing? Come teach at the Writer's Call Center. Uh, Shannon Alexander, let's go. <laughs> so. Do it.